What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Nerdy Mark channel. I am Sid the Nerdy Mark and today I have your review of NXT and 205 Live. <laughs> NXT did come to us from San Jose once again in the War Games ring and it started off with tag team action. Loney Lorcan and Danny Burch taking on the Mighty in a pretty fine match. I actually really like this one. I think these two are uh, teams that are very compatible with each other. One quick note, I just want to say, Nick Miller of the Mighty looks a lot like Link from Good Mythical Morning if he had bigger muscles. Great match here, I really, really enjoyed it. The whole thing uh, going on here was the Mighty actually taking their opponents as weapons against one another, if that makes sense. So this did backfire when they, they, they tried to hit a double team move onto uh, Oni Lorcan, Danny Burch got up, uh, they slammed Oni Lorcan onto uh, Birch and then picked up Lorcan again, tried to go for it one more time, but this time Birch got up, beat the two of them up, and they got we have a double pin, and Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch won this match. Afterwards, the Mighty did attack uh, Lorcan and Birch, and uh, looks like this is the next feud going in for both of these tag teams. We then had EC3 making his way into the ring, making his in-ring return uh, after being on the shelf for about a month, courtesy of Undisputed Era, and he's taking on Marcel Barthel. Speaking of which, his ring comp buddy Walter has apparently also signed on to WWE, so that's pretty interesting. This was a pretty decent match. Barthel and EC3 definitely um, showing off a lot of potential here. Marcel Barthel uh, at one point says nine, as in no in German, and then EC3 counters with saying one, because you know, he's the top 1%. EC3 at one point even hits uh, what is basically his version of the people's elbow. Instead of uh, you know taking off the elbow pad and doing this whole thing, EC3 just says EC3. That's how you do it, right? Three. The match did end when EC3 did hit the uh, one percenter or top one percenter, whatever it was, to win the match and then cuts a promo on Bobby Fish. So next week we are gonna get Bobby Fish versus EC3. That should be a good match. Next up, we do have Vanessa Bourne taking on the Blasian Batty Mia Yim, one of the, the latest signing onto the women's division in NXT. And this was a damn good match. Both women did just an amazing, amazing job. Vanessa Bourne mocking Mia Yim. She got the upper hand in the beginning, but of course Mia Yim did fire back and whatnot, showing a lot of potential here. And on a side note, I do want to see Mia Yim and Mercedes Martinez uh, in a match together. The match did end when, of course, Mia Yim hit the Soul Food. I think that's that's the name of her finisher. Soul as in S-O-L-E, as in the soles of your feet. Interesting name for a finisher. So anyway, she hits the Soul Food onto Vanessa Bourne and wins the match. So building up some momentum for Yim. I'm excited to see what they have in store for Mia in the near future. So before we get to the main event, a couple of promos and things I want to talk about. First off, Tommaso Ciampa did cut a promo with Goldie and saying that he will be live next week and he tells the NXT universe to follow his lead, which is interesting because he did spend a lot of time berating the fans and now he wants them all to follow him. Then we also did get a promo package for the former Donovan Dijak, who is now Dominic Dijakovic. That, anyway, that's, that's gonna be that's gonna take a while for me to memorize that name. That, that should be promising. I'm interested to see where he goes from there. We also had an interview with Kairi Sane, Io Shirai, and Dakota Kai. They, of course, are challenging Shayna Baszler, Marina Schaefer, and Jessamyn Duke to a six-woman tag match. I wonder when that's gonna happen. I don't think it's happening next week, but we shall see. So on a side note, uh, apparently Punishment Martinez's debut has already been uh, pre-taped. Uh, so NXT's tapings have already uh, said that you know uh, he's he's already uh, made it onto NXT TV. So I'm excited to see Martinez make his debut uh, formally on NXT television. And now it's time for our main event: Lars Sullivan taking on Keith Lee. This is a match that I've wanted to see for a very long time, as I mentioned last week. Interesting fact, Keith Lee and Mia Yim had a match on the same episode of NXT. So I guess a couple that wrestles together stays together. This is just coming from a single guy and my observation. This was good stuff. I 
enjoyed all of it throughout. Cannot say enough about how much I loved it. Uh, both men really, uh, you know, bringing out their, their their strengths and really just testing each other's uh, power and whatnot. Keith Lee brought it to to uh, Sullivan, man. I'm telling you, this was good stuff. I mean, just everything I wanted to see in a big guy match. Okay, he, uh, this everything is this is everything that I wanted to see. But the match ended, and it looks like Keith Lee was gonna win. But the match ended, of course, when Keith Lee tried to go hit a suicide dive off, you know, outside the ring onto Sullivan, which he connected, brought him back in, tried to hit a top rope maneuver, but missed. Then, of course, Sullivan took advantage, hit the freak accident for the win. So I'm guessing either A, this feud is not over, or B, they want to send Lars Sullivan up to the main roster on a high note. So one or the other, I don't know, but either way, this was a great way to finish out NXT. 205 Live began with Neville, I mean Mike Kanellis, taking on Noam Dar. His wife Maria Kanellis is on commentary and emasculates Percy Watson, but this was a pretty decent match. Noam Dar, of course, losing to Buddy Murphy last week, but that's okay. I mean, he still looked good in defeat, and this was also a really good match. However, it did end when it looked like Mike Kanellis was going to win. But Lucha House Party distracted him and looked like only Lince Dorado and Kalisto came from the entrance ramp and he turned over to his wife Maria and he got a kick in the face by Kalisto when the referee of course was distracted by the other two members of Lucha House Party. This allowed Noam Dar to hit the Nova Rolla for the win. I'm a little confused. So Lucha House Party basically used a heel tactic to defeat a heel when we're supposed to be convinced that Maria and Mike Kanellis are the bad guys but it's I, I just find it weird I'm a little confused about that because so you uh, he faces using heelish tactics um, this either means they're turning them heel or I don't know what else and besides the whole lucha house rules thing is more skewed towards the heels I know about the whole lucha house rules thing that's how they've been uh, destroying the revival on raw and uh, continuing to bury them. So this was kind of weird. It's not really befitting of their character, but Whatever we'll see. I don't know where this is going. So Yeah, let's let's just move on. We now had Hideo Itami return a month later He hasn't been in action since that grueling match last month against Mustafa Ali in, in a two out of three falls match. He does beat a local peon, Le Levi Cruz. He makes pretty quick work of him. And then Arya Davari, who's been gone for seven months, he comes back, he comes in, he takes off his glasses, takes off his jacket, and he stares down Hideo Tommy, turns his attention to Cruz, and starts beating the crap out of him. And then he says, I respect you to Hideo Tommy and shakes his hand. So it looks like we're gonna see a bit of a partnership between these two uh, people in the near future. So let's see where this goes. But welcome back to both gentlemen. So a few segments that I wanna get into before we get to the main event. The first one, the Brian Kendrick and Akira Tozawa training, and the Brian Kendrick shows off a bit of his aggressive side to Tozawa. And then we have a little uh, promo from Drew Gulak and gentleman Jack Gallagher where Gulag finally does challenge the Brian Kendrick to a match. So we're finally getting uh, Gulag versus Kendrick next week. This should be a good match. Uh, we did have TJP arguing with Drake Maverick in the uh, backstage. He even brings up the whole accident he had at Survivor Series. I don't know why we're doing it, and I don't know why this has become Drake Maverick's new gimmick. Now I'm scared to go out for drinks with Drake Maverick. This all led to a match being booked between TJP and Mike Kanellis versus the Lucha House Party in a Texas Tornado match, which I'm thinking is gonna be the main event. So I'm interested to see how that's all gonna play out. It is now time for our main event. We do have Cedric Alexander teaming up with Mustafa Ali to take on the cruiserweight champion Buddy Murphy and his friend Tony Nese. This was a beautifully technical match. I loved every single bit of it. A little bit similar to the tag team match we saw in NXT, where this time though, it was the faces who kept ramming Tony Nese into Buddy Murphy. So, I mean, kind of a similar thing going on between uh, both shows in that regard, along with month-long returns. This was good stuff. Go watch this match if you haven't. Definitely match of the night for me. I don't know what else you want me to say about it, but uh, I guess 
The match did end when Mustafa Ali tried to hit a roll up onto Buddy Murphy and that didn't work. Buddy Murphy then pushed Mustafa Ali with his legs where he landed on the top rope and was tagged in by Alexander. Then Ali hit a DDT onto Buddy Murphy. Alexander came in, hit the lumbar check for the win. Looks like Alexander is back to his winning ways by and large. I am smelling a either a fatal four-way or a triple threat match between Buddy Murphy, Tony Nese, Cedric Alexander, and Mustafa Ali, where we are gonna see a double turn with Cedric Alexander and Tony Nese. So overall, I thought NXT and 205 Live both put out really solid shows. I thought they were both really, really exciting. A lot of uh, different things being set up, a lot of uh, intriguing stuff happening. NXT, I think my, ma my favorite match was easily, easily Keith Lee, versus Lars Sullivan. I, I just, I love a good Haas fight a, a lot, just like my buddy John Kearns from Armbar Audio. 205 Live, again, the main event there, Alexander and Ali taking on Nice and Murphy. Great uh, main events. Though I do feel the tag team matches do feel similar in the sense that, you know, we had spots where uh, one team was using um, the other teammates to ram into each other and whatnot so i mean that was interesting i mean but that, i mean that's cool it is what it is it's not like a big deal it doesn't like take off points for me i just kind of found that interesting i just wish they would stop referencing drake maverick's accident at survivor series uh on 205 live i they're gonna do it on raw because raw is a cesspool right now and i can so i can understand that well not really but I, you know you get the point um, but however, I really wish they wouldn't do it on 205 Live. By the way, did you guys notice that even in defeat, a lot of these superstars look good? Can we say the same for the main roster? Hmm. So that pretty much concludes my review of NXT and 205 Live. Let me know what you guys thought about both shows in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on social media and tell your friends about the Nerdy Mark. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. This is Sid signing off. You guys take care. Bye-bye.